<sighs> guys, 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 guys. I am confused. That doesn't happen that often, but I am confused. Many of you may know, my beautiful fans out there, I am a diehard UFC fan. I have been watching this sport nonstop since I was seven years old. And not to toot my own horn, but I basically know a lot about this game. I mean, you would think watching this sport for almost 14 years, I know a lot about this game. I'm going to explain my confusion. We all know the UFC had one of their biggest pay-per-views. I want to say biggest, but they had a pay-per-view last weekend. UFC 265, Lewis versus Gone, the interim UFC heavyweight championship was on the line. Now I know this was a card that was not going to blow your hair back. That, that's one thing. It wasn't the biggest card of the year. But it seemed to have left more questions than it did answers. And I'm going to do something I don't really do on the show after a UFC event. I always talk about the buildup. I always talk about the aftermath of a pay-per-view. But this time, I'm going to talk about what's next. Like Drake said, we'll see what's about to happen next. That's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. And I'm going to talk about what's next for two fighters. Basically, the two biggest winners that came out of that fight card. Let's start with Vicente Luque. Vicente Luque, he's one of my favorite fighters. I saw his rise on the Ultimate Fighter, Black Zillions versus American Top Team. He is a dog. Absolute dog. His last loss was almost two years ago. That was against Wonderboy Thompson. And ever since then, he's been on a four-fight win streak, an absolute tear. He faced another Ultimate Fighter alumni, another Ultimate Fighter winner in Michael Chiesa, who is an absolute dog as well. Since switching weight classes to welterweight, he's been on a three-fight win streak against... Carlos Condit, Neil Magny, and Diego Sanchez. Three legends that he has wins over. And honestly, I thought this fight was going to be a tough fight for Luque. And it was a tough fight for Luque. I mean, Michael Chiesa did everything right, albeit he looked a little flat. He looked a little sloppy. But he had Vicente Luque in some trouble. But as I mentioned, Vicente Luque is a dog, all right? A absolute dog. He got out of his adversity and ultimately landed up submitting Michael Chiesa with an amazing Darce choke. Amazing Darce choke. I thought Tony Ferguson was the king of Darce chokes, but no, nah, I think Vicente Luque is taking that title. And he called out the champ, and, you know, he Kamar Usman has business with the one and only Kobe Covington. That matchup is taking place in November. Once that matchup gets sorted out and once we see what happens in that fight, I think we'll have more clarity on what's next for, for Vicente Luque. Excuse me. We'll have more clarity on what's next. And it, it, it's, it's perfect. He's in a great spot. A lot of people are talking about him. He's in the title picture. He has a lot of options for fighting another top-level guy as well. I mean, many people want to see him fight Leon Edwards. I wouldn't be mad at that. Of course, Nate Diaz is chirping about coming back. Nate Diaz already said he would fight Vicente Luque. That's perfect. That is another great fight that can easily happen. And in my mind, it can absolutely boost Vicente Luque into another stratosphere of stardom. Not many people still really don't know who he is. A lot of the casuals don't really know who he is. But if he goes out there and beats Nate Diaz, I'll be at Leon Edwards beat Nate Diaz. But after that fight, we were more talking about Nate Diaz rocking Leon Edwards rather than Leon Edwards getting the win. If Vincente Luque can go out there and just have an all-out war with Nate Diaz, then we can see him emerging into not only title contention or the title picture, but into superstar status. All right, let Kamaru Usman and Kobe Covington figure their business out. I say let Leon Edwards, you know, maybe fight Gilbert Burns, and you have Vincente Luque fight Nate Diaz. Those are the three fights that have to take place. Already one is set in stone. Make those two happen, and you know we'll have a little bit of a tournament style, basically. You know what I mean? It, it's going to be tough. You know that, that's the beauty about this sport. But I definitely think that's what's going to happen next: Vicente versus Nate, and then you're going to have Gilbert versus Leon. Uh, even if Vicente and Nate fight, if it, and whoever comes out the winner of that, the winner of Gilbert and Leon will be the ultimate number one contender. That's just a fact. But I'm excited to see what happens next there. Let's move on to the main event that happened that night. Derek Lewis, Cyril gone. All I'm going to say is this about the main event and what transpired in the fight is that Cyril gone almost 
looked untouchable. He did look untouchable. And it looked like the moment was too big for Derek Lewis. He just looked like a deer in headlights. He looked like he couldn't really get off. And I don't know if that's how good Cyril Gaon is. And I don't know if that's how bad Derek Lewis looked. But I'm going to give Cyril Gaon credit where credit is due. Now, the rumors are that Stipe Miocic, arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time, has accepted a fight with John Jones, one of the greatest fighters, period. That leaves a lot of things in limbo. Because remember earlier in the year when Francis Ngannou won the title, we had a little bit of chirping between both Francis and John on when they were going to fight, if they were ever going to fight. John Jones wants to get paid, all right? And until then, we're not going to see him. He's busy transforming his body. He's busy getting heavyweight ready while other guys are here fighting. Here's a good thing is that Cyril Gaon versus Francis Ngannou is not scheduled yet. It doesn't have an official date. doesn't have an official venue. It's not scheduled. So it's not like Dana White can be like, oh, we already made this fight. No. Here's the beauty of it is that Francis Ngannou can still fight John Jones. But the problem that we're still facing is will John Jones get paid? He's not asking for 50, 60, 70 million. He's just asking for a reasonable amount, as is Francis Ngannou. That fight can still happen towards the end of the year. That could be the end of the year closer for 2021. That could be the big fight. Dana White knows all about money. And at times, the UFC don't really make sense. And speaking of not making sense, we have seen champions not fight interim champions right off the bat. Perfect example is Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson won the interim belt for Kevin Lee, and that fight was supposed to take place, but it never did. For the belt, at least. It could still take place now, but it hasn't taken place for the belt. Now, for this case, you have a storyline with Francis Ngannou and Cyril Gaon. They used to train together in France under the same coach, Fernand Lopez, and you know, he, he, he built these fighters into champions, basically. So that's a big fight, but it's not a fight that's happening yet. I think you make Francis Ngannou, John Jones, and maybe if Surreal wants, have Stipe and himself fight. I think that fight is the clear-cut number one contender. And speaking of Stipe, why didn't the UFC make Stipe and Derek Lewis for the interim title instead of Surreal and Derek? Why did that not happen? Stipe is the greatest heavyweight of all time. I don't know if it's because they weren't going to pay him enough. If Stipe was just waiting for Francis. Who really knows? But I felt that's the fight that should have taken place last Saturday. Stipe definitely wants a piece of the pie. He wants to do anything he can to get back into the title picture. A fight with John Jones makes all the sense in the world. But John Jones being the dumbass that he is, he's probably not going to take that fight. So... I would skip that fight, maybe book Surreal versus Stipe, and the winner of that becomes a clear-cut number one contender, and you get the money fight, you get the biggest fight in UFC history, the fight that all the fans want to see, which is Jon Jones versus Francis Ngannou. That might be as big as, it's going to be like Godzilla and King Kong fighting, that's for sure. That's how much of a nerd I am, that's the type of analogy I'll make. But that, that's the fight we really want to see. And here's the beauty with all this is that we are going to get big fights in the heavyweight division no matter what. No matter if it's going to be John Jones versus Francis, Stipe and Surreal Gone. One of those two say it's John Jones and Stipe or Stipe and Francis 3 or even Stipe and John Jones. We are going to get amazing fights from here on out in the heavyweight division but i feel like that is the only plan that needs to take place in order for the division to not get log jammed albeit it kind of already is but that all in all that interim title fight was probably the most unnecessary title fight that needed to happen and it couldn't have happened to two worse guys i mean maybe if it was stipe Derek lewis would have had a better chance of winning i'm not saying it hurts the company but it, it definitely was something that didn't need to happen All I have to say is I'm excited to see what happens next. And as Drake said, see what's about to happen next.